What's up, what's up, live? How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. Um, I'm going to ease into this if this is your very first time catching me live because how YouTube typically works is that they have to send out a few notifications to give people the opportunity that want to tune in live the ability to do so. And um, I really like to have these conversations with a small audience, not anything crazy, of course, but I do like having commentary back and forth. I think that that makes the content more valuable. It gets answers to necessary questions and really makes the overall experience for myself and for the viewer even better. So um, that being said, as you guys come in, if you can hear me okay, please let me know you guys can hear me. Um, and then once I'm sure that you guys can hear me, we'll get into today's subject because I don't want to spend a whole lot of time talking to myself, right? Um, also, as a reminder, and I'll put this in the chat here momentarily, and if you see me looking off to the side, my live chat is off to the side. I know it looks like I'm looking at you here, but I have a separate monitor set up here. This is how I'll be engaging with you guys. Um, what I want you guys to, to understand is that um, I am aware that notifications are not going out to as many people as would like to come to the live streams. So there's a link underneath this video to subscribe to my um, newsletter for absolutely free. So you can start getting emails when things like this continue to happen to hopefully make the overall experience better. Also, Eastern Standard Time, it's only around 3 p.m. So I suspect that a lot of people are at work right now and may not have the opportunity to watch this video, but I'm really big on being the type of person that once I'm inspired to have a conversation, let's go ahead and have this conversation um, in real time, right? Uh, okay, see a couple of people are here live with me. I want to talk to you guys about how do you make six figures in a shorter amount of time? So people have goals to make six figures in a year. Some people have goals to make six figures in a week. Some people have uh, goals to make six figures in a month. Uh, by the grace of God, and those of you all that follow me on Instagram have probably saw me share the award too many times. Um, last year, which I mean, what we're talking about literally a month ago, it was last year, if you're watching this in real time. But um, last year, my business received an award for having a six-figure day. Um, I like winning awards in business because... Um, it shows that it's not just me talking. You understand? All right. And I see that number going up in the live chat. So I'm giving YouTube an opportunity to let some more people know that we're here as well. Um, I need you guys to talk to me as well because uh, here's the disconnect on the channel. I want to address this as well. And then that should be enough time to let everybody that wants to come in here live get here live. If you guys can't tell what I'm doing yet. Um. There is a disconnect. I tell people all the time, we can speak the same language and still have a language barrier. And I am aware that there is a slight language barrier at times in these live stream videos. Reason being is pretty simple that um, when you climb your economic ladder, right? Bettering your personal economy, making more money, creating generational wealth, whatever you want to call it, right? On the lowest levels, it's tactical. On the higher levels, it's more psychology and philosophical. Um, I'll give you a real life example, and then we're going to dive through these uh, steps. So entry level, let's say you're somebody that just wants to make more money and you want to get into the boat maintenance business, right? You live in an area where there's a market for it. You want to start fixing on boats. So that's what you decide to dive into, right? Um, and you can make great money as a boat mechanic in the right market. However, at a certain level, and different people will say it's at different places, but I have found it to be at around a $500,000 a year mark, you hit a glass ceiling. At that glass ceiling, you struggle to figure out how do we get over the hump, right? That's why it's important to go to the next level. That next level is not tactical at all. It is more concerned with human psychology. So at the highest realms of making money, the trainings, the network, the focus goes from what are the tactical steps to fix an engine or repair a boat in this example that we're talking about. And it's going to evolve into how does the person think that buys boats? 
Because if you understand how they think, you're able to market to them more efficiently, offer them more things that they need. And overall, you make more money once you get into the mind of the customer. All right. I hope that makes sense. But the reason why I'm saying that is because I'm in a whole lot of high level trainings and sometimes I kind of blend it together. And I think that some people are confused because they feel like, JT, you doing a whole lot of talking, but we not really getting the tactics down. And I want you to know that the what I'm giving you is above tactics. If you need tactics, tell me. But I'm giving you really what's above tactics, which is the next sphere of financial literacy and money. Step one, let's say you wanted to make six figures in a day, plan for it, right? Somebody help me out, put it in the chat. Let's get into the tactical side of it. If YouTube haven't sent out notifications by now, then they're not going to send them out, right? So step one, plan for it. Let's talk about what goes into your plan. Here's the biggest mistake that people make. They'll say, okay, JT, if you made $100,000 in a year, let me pull out my phone and grab the calculator. You guys know I got a South Carolina education. So... You made $100,000 in a day. I can multiply that on any calculator by 365 days in a year and say, hey, JT, you should have made $36,500,000 a year. I will be the first one to tell you that we didn't make that much last year, right? If you have that mindset, you've already kind of missed the whole premise of it. Now, there are certain businesses that do have years that will and better, but you guys talk to me in the chat. If you made six figures a month, but you only made money once a month, would you be okay with that? Yes or no? If you made six figures once a month, but when you made it, it was all in one day. The first of the month came and you made six figures on the first. Would you be okay with it? Yes or no in the chat? I'm just looking at the chat here. So since the vast majority of people would agree uh, that if you only made six figures one day a month, you still would be OK with it. If you only made one point two million dollars in a year, understand that the ability to make six figures in a day, one does not mean that you have to make it every day. And secondly, most people do not need to make six figures every single day in order to live the life that they want to live. All right. So let's just put that out there just to set the record straight. Once you understand that, it becomes even easier. That's why I wanted to start there, because if you think that you got to figure out how to make one hundred thousand dollars or more, Every single day, 365 times a year, a lot of people will immediately shut their mind off and say, JT, I can't do that. Like that, like, you know, I haven't made six figures in a year, some people. So how in the world am I going to go from never making six figures in a year to now you're telling me that I could turn around and make six figures in a day? And then I tell myself that if I learn how to make it in a day, I, I'm going to make it every day, right? They're going to never get started. Serve a micro niche. Serve a micro niche. This is a writer downer. All right. We're beyond the, the philosophical stuff. We'll come back to it. But now I'm giving you tangible nuggets. The first step is make a plan. You thinking that you're just going to haphazardly one day run an ad that's going to explode your business, make a post, it's going to go viral, or just by some whim, eventually word of mouth will build up so much about your product service and information that you're going to have a six figure day. You are more than likely delusional, right? Plan to have a six figure day. It shouldn't surprise you because what I will tell you is this. Nobody I know that has had a six figure day in business. Did it happen by surprise? They planned on it happening and they executed a plan over and over and over again. And they made it happen over and over and over again. Serve a micro niche. What's a micro niche? So a niche is a specialization, right? I believe that anybody that knows anything about anything should be able to oversimplify it in a way that everybody can catch it. So when you hear niche, think of a specialization. You could be in the clothing niche. You could be in the, uh, the food industry. You could be in the trucking industry. And But when we talk about niches, I want you to have a specialization 
in that. So you could be in the transportation industry. Are you an independent courier? Or are you an expediter? Or are you a hot shotter? Are you a dispatcher? Are you a broker? Are you a CDL driver? Or like, you know, there's so many different lanes. Are you a mechanic that specializes on diesel engines? Right? So all of that is opportunities that fall underneath the transportation industry. But I want you to have a micro niche, right? Like being an independent courier was a micro niche. Now, the reason why you need to serve a micro niche is because it's more cost effective. The vast majority of people don't have six and seven figure marketing budgets to be able to broadly blast their business across every demographic known to man and attract their audience out of that. That's what Coca-Cola can do. That's what Walmart can do. All of these big businesses, they have more money than us, right? It's not a knock. It's just reality. Got more money than me. Got more money than you, right? So they can afford to, to broadly spend money, blast it out to any and everybody, and their ideal audience will eventually see it and gravitate to them because they have resources that we don't have. What we're going to do, since we don't have billion dollar marketing budgets, is we're going to serve a micro niche, right? Um, I always like to use whatever I have handy. So um, you guys are going to see, and if you follow me on Instagram, you already know about it. So this is my planner, right? When I say it's my planner, it's the planner that I work off of. It's also the planner that I designed. And if anybody's interested, I'll put some links uh, underneath this video for you to get your own. But the, the point that I want to make here in this planner is bigger than that. So this planner is only designed to help entrepreneurs get organized and stay organized, help content creators get organized and stay organized. If you're not a content creator or if you're not an entrepreneur, this planner doesn't really serve you. Now, can you buy it and use it? Yeah. Right. You can buy whatever you can afford or whatever you would like to buy and use it. But this was designed only for entrepreneurs and content creators to organize their business and scale their business to six and seven figures a year. So the issue that I had was I was working off a traditional planner, just a basic planner that came out of Target. But the, the planner didn't have enough of what I needed to organize my life as a seven-figure entrepreneur and content creator. So what I had to do is not only travel with a planner, I also got notebooks. So I got a I got a notebook and I got a planner and I got to cross-reference the notebook to the planner because the planner don't have all the space that I need, but the notebook doesn't have the organization that the planner has. And that was kind of a hassle. Did we make it work? Yes. Was that the most efficient way? Absolutely not. And I'm old school, so I like physically having a planner, right? There's a lot of online resources as well. You can get a digital planner, but my preference is I like having something physical that I can take and utilize, and this helps me get organized, stay organized, manage my business, and scale it. Without getting organized and staying organized, my business would never have a six-figure day ever. I'm going to just be real, right? We had some six-figure months, but the six-figure months weren't consistent until we got organized and stay organized, right? Keep in mind, the example that I'm giving you, I don't want you to say that you have to make a plan or you can if you want to, but the bigger takeaway is create products or services that serve a micro niche. Let me know if I'm making sense to you. If you don't understand something, I can't solve problems that I don't know exist. So tell me in the live chat if you don't get it, right? So whatever your industry is, here's another point too. This planner is just under a hundred bucks. It's like 90 something bucks. I don't even remember the exact price, right? If you want to buy one, like I said, I'll provide the link underneath the video. Now I am not trying to convince anybody to buy the planner that wants to know why should they spend almost a hundred bucks for a planner, right? So my sister, who is not yet an entrepreneur, she's a therapist. She's a licensed therapist, and uh, she specializes in working with children with autism. She is eventually going to cross over into her own practice and become, um, you know, an entrepreneur that way as a as a therapist. So before I even thought about making my own planner 
with my logos on it and my design and everything, right? And this is called the Genius Planner. That's why it has a brain on it. And you, you guys know that this brain is affiliated with a lot of products uh, that my company owns as well. But it made sense since it's called the Genius Planner to have uh, the, the, the brain on there as well. But before this ever existed as an idea and especially before it existed in the flesh, right? My sister spends a hundred to a hundred and fifty dollars on planners because she used those planners in her practice to keep track of her clients, keep track of information from the parents, from their children that she helped. It, it allows her to stay organized and efficiently be a high level therapist, right? So the reason why that's important is I didn't create this and hope that I can convince somebody to buy it. There's already a market of people and she knows a whole network of therapists and they do the same thing. Right. And it's not just therapists, but I'm just using, you know, one demographic of people um, to let you know that I didn't try to create something and then create a demand for that something. I created something that already solved a needed problem and people are already paying for this. Entrepreneurs are already buying quality planners. Content creators are already working off of quality planners, right? The reason why that's important is because a lot of you all will develop product services or information in a vacuum and then wonder why nobody wants to buy it. Nobody wanted to buy it when it was an idea. So what did you think changed from the time that it was your idea to the time that you physically created your product service or information? If nobody wanted to buy the idea, there's a chance that nobody want to buy the physical thing, right? So what I did was I did market research before I even designed it and developed it. And while this is not for the average person, I'll be honest with you. If you're somebody that just wants to keep track with, you know, soccer practice for your kids or gymnastic practice and doctor's appointments and real basic things like that. There is no need to have a planner that is this detailed, right? And uh, because of the lighting and et cetera, you might can't see it. So I'll try to show it to you, though. So every month is like six or seven pages long. You have the traditional calendar. Then you have a to do list. Then you have an Eisenhower matrix, right? And that is super important if you're an entrepreneur or a content creator. Then it has an income and impact goal for the month, content to produce this month, achievements, challenges, areas I can improve on. These are all things, like I told you, I had a planner and I had a notebook. And a lot of these things were in the notebook, but having it all consolidated in one place now allows me to have one resource that has everything that I know it takes to make six and seven figures in a business. Why? Because I did it already. So I just took that generic target planner that I had with the notebooks that I had, combined them and created the 2024 genius plan. Right. Does that make sense? Right. Does that make sense? Reason why I, I'm telling you this and I'm going deep on this subject is not to, to make you buy the planner or for you to make your own planner, right? I will put a link underneath the video if you're interested in it, but the bigger lesson here is apply this to your industry. What problems can you solve? What questions can you answer? What wants or needs can you service? And then what are they already paying for? People were buying planners before the Genius Planner. If I say after this year, I never want to make another one again, guess what? People are still going to buy planners, right? They're not going to buy mine because it's not going to exist if I decided not to continue to make it. But the market has already decided that they will buy this sort of product at this price point, right? In your industry, what is the equivalent of that? It's not for everybody. It's serving a micro niche. Solve a big problem sell powerful deliverables, right? I'll be honest with you. Organization is a seven figure skill, all right? Because there's a lot of people that make six figures a year in chaos. There's very few people, but it's possible to make seven figures a, a year with extreme chaos, but it's not sustainable. You got to get organized and stay organized, right? But I'll be honest with you. There are bigger deliverables than getting organized and staying organized 
that my business can offer. This is only, like I said, roughly a hundred dollar offer, right? The bigger problems that we serve is businesses pay us ten thousand dollars, so that way they can come spend a media day with us for four hours, and we ten x their investment at a bare minimum, right? At a bare minimum, we're going to look at what their business is, ask some questions, and we're going to 10x their business, right? There's an application process, so that way we know that they're not wasting our time, we're not wasting their time. Is this a client that we can confidently say we can 10x their investment or their business, right, and really serve the needs that they have, right? Which is why we could charge $10,000 for that offer, $100 for this offer. It's a bigger deliverable. So if you solve a big problem, if you sell a powerful deliverable, you can charge a higher price point. This is something that needs to be said in the industry right now. And it's not going to be popular, but it's necessary. So I'm going to say it. When you hear people talking about having premium value offers, high ticket offers, the first thing that I want you to know is that does not mean that they're scamming. That does not mean that they're illegitimate. What that does mean, in my opinion, is that that offer is for businesses, either current businesses or people that are looking to start a business in an expedited way, right? I don't care if an individual has $10,000 and is willing to give it to me for four hours. If you're not a business, this offer is not for you. So I'm not going to take your money and, and know that I can't serve you a 10x or greater return. You have to be a business for this offer. My 60K offer where we help companies cross over a million dollars in a single year, you have to be a business that's already making a quarter million dollars a year, right? How is that relevant to you all? Because I want to tie everything. I'm using real life examples from me, but what I want you to do is not literally think about JT. I want you to think about the concepts that I apply and how you can use them in your business. That's what I want you to do. I want you to think about the concepts that I apply because believe it or not, it's uh, Russell Brunson calls it funnel hacking. You guys can literally adopt the same practices that I'm doing and get similar or greater results because the dope thing about the truth, and I love this quote that I heard years ago, the dope thing about the truth is that they don't change the rules just because you learn them. The dope thing about the truth is that they don't change the rules just because you learned them. So if you learn how JT gets businesses to pay him $10,000 or more, right? Or whoever else you want to learn from, how do these people get people to give them this much money or more? If it's true, it's going to work for me, you, and everybody else that follows the blueprint. Right. And, and what I'm going to do in this live stream is I'm going to give you guys the ability to be able to follow the entire blueprint at your leisure if you want to, to uh to, to get the same exact results. Right. Now that doesn't mean that it's going to be easy. That doesn't mean that you not that you don't have to work, right? I, I contrary to what some people believe, I actually do work, right? But I do want you to know that you can get the same results right? These are teachable things. Nobody was born with the ability to say, you know what? I can go out today and make six figures as a newborn baby, right? But the fact that somebody learned how to do it made it possible for all of us to know that it can be done. Make sense? Y'all let me know. I'm looking in the chat. All right. Let me add this to the chat as well. Again, for anybody that just came into the room, I want to encourage maximum participation in these lives, right? I'm aware that there's a slight there's a slight language barrier in how I explained it er earlier, but for the benefit of anybody that's new to the room, is that as you climb the financial ladder, like you make more and more money, the high-level mentorships that I'm in now are not tactical at all. It's all human psychology. How does the person think is pretty much 100% of all of the financial literacy uh, communities I'm a part of. Now, early on in business, it was how do you turn this screw? How do you deliver this freight? How do you list this item online to sell? And that's cool. 
the ceiling in my experience for being just a tactical person is around half a million dollars a year. I will tell you that I'm sure the majority of people that are watching this have no problem with mastering just the tactical side and making half a million dollars or less per year, right? I know that. But uh, the reason why I say that is not me bragging or boasting is that sometimes in my mind, since I'm doing a combination of uh, attending high level networking events, I was just in Cancun, Mexico. Like some of you guys saw some of the videos. We got other videos coming out soon. In Cancun, Mexico, um, nobody on my row, like we were at a conference. I shared a picture there. I'll drop more information soon. So nobody on my row made less than six figures a month. So on this side of me, somebody made 300000 a month. On the other side of me, this person made $469,000 a month. What I will tell you is that if you're in a room where everybody in the room makes six figures or more per month, and then you try to come back and tell somebody how to make $100,000 for a year, it is a little bit difficult, right? Only because I don't know what you know and what you don't know. And my reference point, Right. My reference point right now are people that do six figure months consistently have been doing it for years. Right. So I'm going to try my best to articulate um, high level information in a way that anybody can understand, not as an insult, but with the attempt of trying to be maximum of maximum value. You get me? So if you have a question, put a question because I'm not trying to talk over your head, but. I don't know where your head is, right? That's that's what I'm saying in a nutshell, right? So solve a big problem, sell a, sell a powerful deliverable, right? Lead away from pain, not towards pleasure, right? I'm giving you guys six figures worth of mentorship right here for free on, on live. Don't let this go over your head, right? Like I told you, when you start going into these rooms where just to get in the room was 30,000, like Cancun, just to get in the virtual rooms is 15,000, like other communities I'm a part of, like getting into this one community is 25 grand a year. And the question that they ask you before you even join is, will paying 25 grand a year, this is a literal question on the application, will paying 25 grand a year for the rest of your life be a financial burden for you, in your opinion, now or at any point in the future. If you say yes, paying 25 grand from now till the day that I die every year may now or in the future be a financial burden, you are not allowed to join the community to begin with, right? That That's just the rules because they don't need your money. This community is... Uh, to foster a certain group of people together and give them a safe community where they can network, be themselves, and grow their businesses. It's not for people that are trying to figure it out. And, and again, I'm sharing this with you to let you know that I'm giving you all of this sauce, but this is where I'm pulling it from. JT not making it up, right? So I took my my independent courier and my YouTube money and I invested it and now we're around high-level millionaires. And, and I truly believe I could create some millionaires off of some free social media content, right? If you believe that, smash that like button. If you believe that you're capable of getting free information and just because I didn't charge you 20, 30, 40, 50,000 dollars for it, you still are able to take it serious enough to take action and change your life, smash the like button, right? Smash the like button, all right? So let me see where we at in the chat. Somebody said the planner is scary, right? All right, it's not for you then. Like, uh, writing your goals and plans down helps 100%. All right, okay, I see what we doing. All right, glad we're on the same page. What's up, what's up, everybody here? Yep, a mastermind. Yep, yep, definitely. Um, There is a time where you need to start getting into masterminds in your niche, right? And it's okay if you're on the tactical level. On the tactical level, you're going to learn the, the tactical things to do to make money. Once you get to the million dollar plus per year level, all the tactical stuff is really viewed as elementary. So there are no tactics, right? To, to If they would have taught tactics at this $30,000 mentorship, the room would have been upset. That's how 
beneath the room tactics is viewed. I know you and I might say, if I spend $30,000, you need to tell me step one through 100 on at least how to make my $30,000 back. That is not what these rooms are at all. You want to know what we learned for $30,000? We learned human psychology. How does the human mind work? What makes people tick? And how do you take how a mind works and tie that to your business? So that way you sell more products or services because you can know how to build a porch. I can know how the person thinks that needs a porch built and not even know how to build a porch and I can make more money than you. Think about that. You can know how to build a porch, but not know how the person mind work that pays you to build a porch. And if all I know is how that person thinks and why I can make more money than you. Right. And, and I don't want to go too far down the, the rabbit hole, right? Lead away from pain, not to pleasure, right? This is going to be my prop this video just because it's the only thing I got handy. So if I said, and this is a true statement, the organization outlined in this planner allow me to have my very first six-figure day and allow my business to have stability. And now we're making way more money quicker than ever before. And it'll do the same thing for you, right? What would the average person say? Too good to be true. That's a scam. You just trying to get me to buy your planner, right? It's no way that for less than a hundred bucks, you're going to teach me how to make six or seven figures, right? That's what the average person would, would believe, right? Right or wrong, let me know. Which is, but if I come and say, hey, look, if you're a content creator or an entrepreneur, and you want to have a consolidated way to get organized and stay organized, this planner is for you, right? It's the same planner. I just worded the offer differently. So instead of promising you a big return, six and seven figures in a short amount of time, right? Can this do it? Absolutely. This is how I organize my business, right? But what most people will say is, why? Why would this person that doesn't know me personally have any reason to teach me how to make six and seven figures a year for only a hundred dollars? Why would you show me how to organize your six and seven figure business for a hundred dollars, right? Now, we as entrepreneurs that will watch this, we understand that that's crazy, right? It, it doesn't hurt me in any way if any of you all organize your business the way that I organize and run mine. If anything, it would make me more money, right? Because now it's more efficient people in the marketplace. If you become competition, I'm all for competitive markets. That forces my business to become better. Um, if it makes sense down the line, maybe you operating an efficient business and me operating an efficient, uh, an efficient business makes it an opportunity in the future that we can partner together and make even more money together than operating independently, right? So as an entrepreneur, I understand there's so many value propositions in why, right? So me just using this blueprint makes me six and seven figures. What if me selling the book makes me an additional six figures? Did I have to do any work? No, I made this planner because this structure is how we're going to organize and run our business for the next 12 months. So I needed it anyway. So if I sell a copy to you and let you run your business the same way, that doesn't hurt me at all, right? If anything, it allows people to become more efficient and it improves the brand of the, the JT Automations brand, right? If we put all the cards on the table. Again, for anybody that's new in the room, I want you to adopt the mindset that I'm giving you and apply it to your business, right? If you have questions, ask questions. I'm not ducking any questions. If I don't know the answer, I'm going to say, I don't know. But if you have a question that I can answer, I am going to tell you the answer here live, right? Share this video with anybody you think it can help and comment done. The goal here is to tell you secrets. $100,000, if you want it in a year, is only a, a little over $8,300 a month, Right? A little over 8,300. Now, if you want it in a day, that's different. You want it in an hour, that's different. You want it in a, you know what I mean? Like, we have six-figure months, right? Consistently. So, so what I want you all to do, though, is I want you, who here is serious about making six figures this year? 
Let me know. Who here is serious about making six figures this year? Put a one in the chat. I know some of you all might be at work. Some of you all might can't really type that much. But I just want to talk to people that are serious. Who's serious about this year is the year that I'm going to make at least six figures consistently. Right? While you guys are typing, let's recap what's the step so far. Plan for it. Plan for it. It's not going to happen accidentally. If you fail to plan for it, then there's a good chance it'll never happen. Going deeper into the plan. Serve a micro niche. Don't try to sell everything to everybody. Right? Let's be real. The vast majority of people that watch this YouTube channel have never purchased anything from me. That's not a knock, right? I appreciate everybody's time just for watching the videos. The reason why I share that, again, it's not a knock, is I want you to know that you don't need everybody to buy your products or service. Is anybody not afraid to put a two in the chat if you've never bought anything from me? Other than watching the free YouTube videos, right? And there's no pressure. I'm not trying to embarrass anybody. If anything, if we could just show some of the people here, right? If you've never bought an ebook, a course, a, a consultation, mentorship, anything, right? And for those of you that are watching this after the fact, put it down in the comment section too, right? If you've never bought anything, if all you've done is watch the free YouTube videos, and it's not a knock, right? Um, uh, put it in the chat because I, what I want you all to see is how many people, right, are here. They watch my stuff. They've never bought anything. And I still appreciate your time. I love you the same way. Right. But what I want you to see is in your business, don't let the fact that you have X amount of followers on your Instagram, on your, on your email list, on your, whatever your means of contact is. And not everybody there has bought something from you, right? We make great money every single month. And look at how many people here have never bought anything, right? And there's no pressure. Like I said, I love everybody here. There's no pressure for any of them to ever buy anything from me, right? If, if I don't serve a, a problem that they have, a desire that they have, if I can't help them get to the level that they're trying to get to, I don't deserve a penny of their money, right? So it's not it's not anything other than that. Serve a micro niche, right? Serve a micro niche. Solve a big problem by selling a powerful deliverable. Lead away from pain, not to pleasure. So instead of me trying to say this planner will make you six and seven figures like it did me, I'm going to tell you, hey, if you're not organized, that's painful, right? I have, I have less than an hour, right, uh, before I talk to an attorney, and um, I got to get a wire sent over. Now, this wire is probably about three, four months late, and I'm grabbing something, so I apologize, right? This wire is probably three or four months late, so I have $115,000 outstanding. That's money that's owed to me now that I should have had already, but I'm so busy running around and not as organized as I should be, which is why we're really working off of this as our playbook this year, that I need to make a call and say, hey, look, here's the wiring instructions. Like, here's here's my information. Here's my wiring instructions. S send me my 115, please, that I should have been had, right? And, and I say that because whether somebody is waiting on that much money, more money than that, less money than that. If you're not organized, you're losing money. So when I say, hey, if you're trying to get organized and stay organized, the right person understands, man, me not being organized, how many opportunities am I missing? How much money am I not making because I don't have a funnel? I'm not using my email list properly. I'm not even collecting emails. I don't have enough product services and information out there in my respective businesses. I need to hire somebody. I need to do this. I need to do that. How many of us have to-do lists long as our arms, but we're not consistently doing the things on the list to get the results that we know we, we want and we deserve in our business, right? So lead away from pain, not to pleasure, right? Next point, create a funnel. Create a funnel. 
I challenge each and every person here to not let this week end. I don't care when you watch this video. I don't care if it's Saturday and you got 10 minutes left. Do not let this week end without you having a funnel. Right? What's a funnel? Just so we're all clear. All right? A funnel is a customer journey. So your funnel could be paid ad, email, offer. Right. And you can, of course, I'm going high level. You can have sequences and all of that good stuff. But I want you to understand a customer journey. Right. Some of you all aren't selling. We sell stuff every single day. Right. How do we sell stuff every single day? Because we have a funnel. We have a customer journey. Customers see this thing that's valuable to them and they take advantage of it. Because we have a journey at the top of our funnel, whether it's an ad, whether it's a social media post, whatever it is that we decided to do, right? Whether it's a collaboration with, with influencers, right? We get awareness to our products, our services, and our information, all right? I own over nine Instagram accounts. Most people only know me from the JT Hustles one. Right. I own nine Instagram accounts and we partner with other Instagram accounts to spread the word because I also invest in a food trailer. I also invest in a dumpster rental business. These are businesses that while I talk about them, we never go deep about them on this channel because uh, it doesn't make sense to. But we still consistently make money in all of those businesses. Right. Most people know me as an author because I, I bought like an insane amount of these shirts and my website is authorjt.com. But customer journey, I want everybody here to commit. Do not let the week end without having a funnel. A funnel is a customer journey. If The fastest way to get customers is paid ads. People like saying, well, I'm going to just post organically on my social media. That does work and it is work. Let's be real. I grew my platform. I grew my, I grew my Instagram account to over 100,000 people, we were posting like 13 to 15 times a day. We don't post that much now, but I'm just telling you what kind of work ethic it took with zero ads. We posted 13 to 15 times every single day and grew my Instagram account to 100,000 plus followers, right? Who here has that much time every single day? I don't. I got employees, right? So, so who has that much time to grow an Instagram account, right? On YouTube, I posted six to eight times a day way back when, when I first started on YouTube back in 2017, 2018-ish, right? I don't even remember the exact date right offhand, right? Six to eight videos a day. That's me. Got to think about what I'm going to say. I got to record it. I got to edit it. I don't know how to edit it. So it's a lot of ums and ums and whatchamacallits and all of this stuff because I don't know how to edit that stuff out. And I didn't have a whole lot of experience speaking publicly. So I was stumbling over my words, not because I didn't know what I was talking about, but just because I wasn't experienced in articulating how I feel to other people in a way that they can replicate what I've done to get same, the, the same results in their life, right? So people will say, all of that to say this, <laughs> people will say, I'm just going to organically grow on social media. If you're not a dog, it's not going to happen. Let's just be real. If you're not a dog, it's not going to happen. Who here is willing to post 15 times a day on their Instagram? Who's here willing to post six to eight times on their YouTube channel, right? To build it up into a monetized asset. For how long? However long it takes. For me, it took eight months on YouTube. For Instagram, it took probably like a month, but the algorithms keep changing. So you might do it and it might take you a year now, right? So we, we just nerd out about trying to understand algorithms. So YouTube took us eight months because I had no idea what I was doing. So we was just taking a whole lot of shots. Instagram, it took 30 days, but we was posting a ton of content in those 30 days. Went crazy. So much so once we crossed over 100 100,000 followers, we went back, or my VA went back and archived a lot of those old posts, right? So the fastest way to get customers 
is paid ads. People will say paid ads don't work. Let's talk about why they don't work. They don't work primarily because you don't know what you're doing. Most people think this is how you do a paid ad. Hey, my name is JT. I got a planner here. It's real nice. It can make you some money. It can organize your business. Um, You should click the link and buy my planner. And they'll record that. And then they'll put $5 a day, $10 a day, or whatever amount of money they have and say, okay, I got an advertisement running. And they're like, man, I'm spending this money. I see this money going out, but I'm not making no money, right? I'm not selling these planners. I'm not collecting a lot of emails. I don't know what in the world is going on. Here's how professional marketers market. They'll take this and they'll create at a bare minimum five different ads. In every ad, they're going to call out their customer avatar. What does that mean to call out your customer avatar? Instead of saying, hey, I got this planner, you say, are you an entrepreneur or content creator that knows that you could be making double, triple, or 10 times the amount of money that you're already making if you could get organized and stay organized? Now, that's clearly identifying only a certain person. If you're not a content creator or entrepreneur, that's the first one. Deeper than that, if you know that getting if you know that you're already losing money, right? Because you're not getting organized and staying organized, right? So unless you check all of those boxes, this don't even apply to you, right? But a professional marketer is going to make five ads, do them differently, maybe different colors, maybe different call outs, maybe different graphics pop up on the screen, right? And then they're going to split test, which means that they're going to run all five of those ads simultaneously and see which one gets the most traction. The ones that don't perform well, they're going to shut them off and they're going to redirect those funds to other ads. Currently, as of this upload, and I tell you guys, I hate to throw out numbers because I like to make evergreen content. And as soon as you put out a number, the market changes and then this ain't the number anymore. So I'm going to tell you as of this recording, what the numbers are, right? It may be higher or lower by the time you see this video, by the time you execute on it, right? $20 a day per ad, minimum of five ads, $100 a day. You need to let them run for roughly at least a month, right? So if we do the math, $100 a day, spread out evenly, uh, $20 per ad, doing five different ads, and you're blasting them out on social media, 30 days in a month, we're talking $3,000. Right here, tactical question. We tactical with it now. Is knowing what your ideal customer wants to hear in order to buy from you worth $3,000, yes or no? Is knowing what your ideal customer needs to hear from you in order to buy your product, service, or information, is it worth $3,000? Yes or no? Right? Y'all let me know. We're going we gonna to have a real conversation. I told you guys, when we come live, I'm talking to you guys live. Right? It, it, it's not a just a, let me just say what I got to say, pre-recorded video, throw it out there, you watch it, you don't watch it. When we come live... I'm having a real conversation with real people because I want you to make real money after this, right? I love, I would love if you subscribe. I would love if you share the video. I would love if you like the video. What I would love the most, if I had to pick between all of that and this, is if you went out and made money, better your life, better your mama life or whoever your loved ones are, right? Your spouse, your kids, your mama, your daddy, whoever you love, right? And then you paid it forward. Right. You paid it for it because at the end of the day, like the number on the screen it is more of a vanity metric. Right. Having subscribers make people I tell people all the time, having subscribers, just let people know that I ain't scamming. Right. Because with this many subscribers and this many views across the channel, if I was scamming, somebody would have said it already. Right. And when I say say it, I mean with receipts. They would have showed you this. This is how he finessed me. This is what happened. Like, cause anybody can say anything, right? So I tell people, man, having having followers is cool, but it's really just it's it's a comfort thing. People know you're not gonna get this big and be scamming people, cause somebody would have showed the receipts, 
that JT took their money or JT did them this way or that way. If it was true, right, somebody would have showed the receipts. All right. Um, I just been looking at the videos. Time to act on the information. Absolutely. Don't be an information hoarder, Mr. Reese. Right. Don't for be a, don't be an information hoarder. That goes for everybody, though. Right. Don't be an information hoarder. What does that mean? Don't watch a bunch of YouTube videos, buy a bunch of books, take a bunch of courses. Now, you know, everything, but have done nothing. Execute. Execute. I was approved for a cargo van loan. Don't want to build out a fleet, but want to use courier profits to stack capital for other venture funding. You can absolutely do that, Anthony Russell. You can absolutely do that. All right. Okay. I'm seeing the yeses start to roll in. Right. Now, here's the thing. If you say no, that's fine. I don't make the rules. Here's here's how the industry works. High level, right? Because I'm not like the industry. I'm just telling you how it works. If everybody starts doing this same blueprint, this is the problem with tactics, which is why the higher you go up, you go more into human psychology than tactics because the tactics have to change to fit the human and the human changes all the time, right? We could geek out about that in another one. I don't think y'all really care about human psychology. But back to the point, right? So if everybody, let's say all the subscribers on this channel, uh, miraculously saw this video, which YouTube doesn't do that, but miraculously saw this video, and everybody created five different ads, calling out their avatar, leading them away from pain, not towards pleasure, short, concise, solving a problem that they already know that they have, Selling them a solution that they're already buying an alternative of. Simple as that. You could go spend tens of thousands of dollars to learn how to make an ad. I just told you for free. But you could rewind the clip and play it back if you missed it. But you make five of those ads. And then you take those ads and you go into uh, your Facebook ads manager. And you set up these five ads. And you choose the audience you want to target. And you spend twenty dollars a day times five. You're spending a hundred bucks a day. If everybody does this, how the market works is that the cost to get in front of this audience will increase. Let's say everybody here wants to target um, Caucasian males age twenty five through forty four, right? So I'm also this is the year that I want to launch my toy company. I, that's a whole nother tangent. But for board games, the adult board game industry. Uh, the, the customer avatar is a Caucasian male, age 25 to 44. That's where I get that from, in a nutshell. So, let's say everybody here says, I'm going to target a Caucasian male, age 25 to 44, and we're all going to spend the same exact amount of money. Guess what? That Caucasian male, age 25 to 44, or anybody, it could be an African-American woman, age 40 to 47, right? Um, If everybody targets that exact same person, that person's attention now is more valuable. So now in order to reach the same number of people that you can reach for $20 a day today, it will cost 30, 40, $50 a day. That's just how marketing works, right? As the value of this commodity increases, so does the price. So maybe today you can reach X amount of thousands of people in this market if you had $20 a day. But if you wait and say, wait until I get my tax money or wait six months or a year from now, instead of $20, it might cost you $50 to reach the same amount of people per day, right? And I'm not trying to scare you. That's why I'm big on fast money, right? Because if you're not careful, you'll believe the lie of, fa of fast money, meaning illegitimate money, and you won't understand that everything else around you is appreciating in value at a greater rate than you. I had a conversation on this channel previously, and this was the conversation. I asked everybody, I said, are you more valuable than eggs? I know that sounds crazy. Think about it. If you didn't see that video, think about it. Are you more valuable than eggs? The cost of a carton of eggs is constantly going up. Right? If you feel like you're more valuable than eggs, and eggs can go up, why can't you go up? Why can't your value increase, right? An egg can't call 911 if they see somebody getting attacked, right? An egg can't, can't help save you out of a burning building. 
a egg can't help uh you know a elderly person cross the street a egg just could be an egg that's all an egg can be right and if an egg can increase in value why why can't you right all the stuff that you can do that an egg can't do what makes an egg more valuable than you right and for those that are curious to know eggs increase due to supply and demand all right simple as that and you can increase in value, you should, but most people won't. You could increase in value as well for a similar reason, right? You have less time today than you had a year from now. Now, I wish each and every one of you longevity and abundance, but everybody, myself included, you have at least a year less time than what you had last year this time. So every day, every moment that you live, if we're saying supply and demand justifies an egg going up in value, I got less time every single moment. What makes this egg able to go up in value due to supply and demand? It's less eggs. It's less viable chickens due to the ovarian uh, influenza virus, right? AKA ch chicken flu, right? So if we're able to, to say that eggs can go up in value, why can't humans go up in value? Right? Can anybody tell me why? I don't I don't know why. I think every year at a bare minimum, you can do it multiple times a year. I think every year you can increase your value. Now, a nine to five job typically is not going to give you a raise every single year. So that means that the burden is on you. You have to go up in value every year. And you can do that through your investments. You can do that through your side hustles, through your businesses, all of that good stuff. And I'm not even saying you got to quit your job to do it. If, if your job gives you that stability that you want, cool. But don't let it reduce your value and treat you like you less valuable than eggs because that's not the case, right? You are more valuable than eggs, right? Even those of you all that suffer from low self-esteem, low self you at least as valuable as eggs, right? Because you might have a hard time believing it. <laughs> but you are more valuable than eggs. All jokes aside. Create a funnel. Let this be the last week you don't have a funnel. Funnel is a customer journey. So they, they come and become aware of your product, your service, your information, whatever it is that you sell. We sell all three, right? I sell products. I sell services. I sell information, right? It just depends on what business we're talking about and who we market into, right? So when we identify that, they need a customer journey, right? How are you going to become aware of this and trickle down, all right? I'm not a dog breeder, but I'm a guy with dogs. I got eight puppies. I got one more month and then they're ready to leave their mom. Uh, South African master puppies, they're going for $3,000 a piece. That's $24,000, right? So, um, my funnel, if you will, and this is an oversimplified version of it. I just want to show you how don't make a funnel or a sales journey, a customer journey, compl more complicated than it has to be. My funnel is this. I called the, the breeder that sold me my male dog. I had a conversation with him. I said, Hey, look, I got papers on both of my dogs. They got all their shots. They all a hundred percent South African masters. They registered whole nine yards, right? I got some puppies. When the puppies get big enough, I'm going to get the puppies some shots. I'm going to get papers on all the puppies, right? I'm selling my puppies for $3,000 a piece. He said, that's it? I said, yeah, that's it. Because these dogs go for more than that, right? So I said, hey, listen, this is what I want to do. I want you, since you already are a dog breeder, if you sell my dogs through your network, let's split the money 50-50. You didn't have to feed these two dogs. You didn't have to raise these two dogs. You ain't paid for shots. You ain't had to replace the stuff that they chewed up, right? All you got to do is send out an email or a text message. Let your network of buyers know you got puppies and they're really below the price that, that he charged for his dogs, right? I pay more for the parent dogs than I got, than I'm selling the puppies for, right? But that's my funnel. My funnel is partnering with a marketer because it can be as simple as that right i am partnering with a marketer that already has a niche audience a micro niche the people in his phone 
The people on his email list, they're not looking for teacup Yorkies. They're not looking for mini bullies. They're not looking for German shepherds. He is known as the South African Boro Bowl. Some people call it South, South African Mastiff breeder. So when they see him text them or email them, guess what? They don't expect it to be for deer meat or get a chihuahua. So those people that respond back are in that micro niche, right? We pretty much already have half the litter already sold. I talked to him when the puppies were born and he called me back the next day and half the litter was sold. I got to follow up with them. I might have already sold out, right? So once my puppies are, are old enough, it's one more month, then they can leave their mom, right? That's $12,000. Eight times three, 24000 Eight puppies, 3000 a apiece, $24,000. i am going to give him half the money to sell them. I'm going to make $12,000. And all I got to do is once my puppies get old enough, take one trip, go pick up $12,000, come back. Right? How easy is that? Now, I'm using that because the takeaway is you don't have to be a dog breeder. I'm not a dog breeder. I'm just a guy with two dogs. Right? And they had puppies. You can partner with a marketer and that can be your funnel. You sell it, and I give you an affiliate commission. I give you a referral fee. I give you whatever it is, right? Clickbank.com is a resource. It's a, one of the big resources that does that, right? Share a sale is another one. All right, I'm going to give you guys all the gems. Talk to me. What you need. Whatever you need, I'm going to tell you the place, all right? Now, let's say that you don't want to do um dogs, Rich. That works for anything, but I just use dogs, all right? Um, if, if you were interested in, um, one thing that we're doing this year is we're helping current businesses, uh, get to six figures and then stay consistently every year after working with us, make at least six figures a year or more. Right. So those people are on our email list. So they got on our email list either via ads, advertising, or maybe they saw some social media content, jumped on the Providence Pro newsletter, which is the pinned comment in the live chat and link underneath this YouTube video. And then one of the many emails that, that, that we sent them that give them value, right? Told them about this opportunity to work with us. And now that's an email funnel. So they saw an ad or they saw a YouTube post, join my free newsletter. And then we give them tremendous value up front in the email newsletter. And then we say, oh, if you're a business owner, that's looking to consistently make six figures or more per year, we have an opportunity where I'm going to live coach around 100 or so different business owners to help them get to that level, right? Whether you guys are interested in that or not, let me, let me, let me give you a gem, right? Click the link, right? Subscribe to this channel. Let me tell you the whole play. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on notifications, which is the bell icon. Jump on my free email newsletter. Notice all of this stuff I'm telling you is free. Then I want you to notice how often do we post on social media? How often do we send out emails? When we send out emails, look at what's the subject line, what's the body, right? Now, our emails are only going to get better and better. So I'm not trying to make you believe that I'm the best email writer of all time, right? But our emails do okay. We're going to consistently get better at it until we got really good emails. But the reason why I want you to do that is you can literally follow along and get a Harvard level education. And what does it take to create a seven figure business? And you ain't paid for nothing. It was free to subscribe. It was free to turn on post notifications. It was free to get on the email list right now. If you want to go deeper and see everything that we do, maybe you would buy a book. Maybe you would take advantage of the offer and say, okay, if, if we buy this offer, what do they deliver? Okay, cool. The thing that I love is because I spent 90 grand on financial literacy and I know what $90,000 buys you. When I come out with my $60,000 offer, which we already have, I know that what I deliver at $60,000 is way more than what most people give at 90,000, right? So I'm telling you, Straight up, free game. If you want to know how I'm doing it, just turn on notifications. Every time I post, you're going to get notified. 
join the free email newsletter. Every time I send an email, you're going to see it. You can see the subject line. You can see the body. You can see the offer if there's an offer. You can take that, run it through Quillbot, and it will rewrite your own emails based off of my emails. And it'll do it for my emails and everybody else that you think is, is really good at business. Quillbot will take our emails and rewrite. I'm going to tell you right now, most people on this platform will be mad I even told you that. Right? They do it. All right? They do it. They use chat GPT to write them and, or quill about to rewrite somebody else's that does well. Right? Why, why can't you guys know? So, country, your country cousin JT going to put it all out there. You guys done watched this video over an hour long. Oh, yeah. It got to be some. We got to put some gems in the middle. We got to put some gems for the people that watch this long. Create a funnel. All right? Do you use vidIQ for your channel? No, I use TubeBuddy. Um, I use TubeBuddy. Yeah, you're buying a duplex. Is that a thing anymore? Yeah, multifamily real estate is always a play. Real estate period is always a play. All right. Um, boom, boom, boom. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So we established that people already agree knowing what your customer needs to, to, to see as an offer to convert them into a sale is worth $3,000, right? You don't got to give JT the $3,000. I just told you what to do. Make the ad. Open up Facebook Ads Manager. Run the ads. Right? Whatever ads are, are least performing, cut those off. Take that money and divide it up amongst the ads that are performing. Until you find whatever your top, I would say at least two ads are. Right? And once you narrow it down to those top ads, now, because the reason why I say two, some people will say one, is I don't I don't really agree with you inundating in the marketplace with the same messaging over and over again. Some other people say until it stop working, run that ad. So you make your own decision, right? Whether you want to get it down to one or two, it's completely up to you, right? And then they scale up. So maybe spending a hundred dollars a day generates two grand. I'm just making numbers up because I don't know your offer. If spending a hundred grand generates i mean not 100 grand excuse me if you spend 3000 for the month and let's say 3000 generates 5000 so you made your 3000 back and you made 2000 profit right once you find what ad performs the best maybe instead of doing 100 dollars a day you go to 150 200 whatever you can afford right to be honest with you the biggest people in the marketplace ain't necessarily better than you they just running these plays that I'm telling you and somebody's still going to say why they can't do it. There's people that'll take credit cards and run their credit cards up and run these plays. Once they, they'll split test the ads with a little bit of their own cash and once they find out what ads is working, they'll get a credit card and get reward points and run their whole marketing campaign off credit and pay it back through the sales. And now they got all of these crazy amounts of reward points because they just put their ads on autopilot with that credit card. So they're getting paid to run ads. They making money off their product, service, or information, and they getting paid again through the cash back, through the reward points off the card, right? This how people really play in the game. People that's making more money than you, most of them are not working harder than you. They working smarter than you. They got ads running from them 24-7. And the only time somebody know you selling something is when you get online and post about it or when you see them in person and tell them about it, right? That's just the real. So you working harder than that person and like, I wonder why this person making more money than me. Or I, or even worse, somebody will be like, I know you ain't making more money than me. You got to be lying. You got to be capping because um, I, I know how much I'm working and I don't even see you working as hard as me, right? The goal ain't to work harder. The, the goal is to get the result. I don't care how many people work harder than me, right? I really don't even care how many people make more money than me, right? But the goal is I know what I'm in it for, right? I know what I'm in it for. So that's enough on funnels. But do not let this week end without having a funnel. Next point I want to share with you again. If, if, if I'm over your head, tell me. I'll answer any direct questions I know the answer to, right? Any direct question I know the answer to. All right, so... Don't convince, validate. This is what's crazy. Stop trying to convince people 
to believe they should buy your product, your service, or your information. Just stop, right? Let's look at it two different ways quickly. First is the litmus test that I always tell you guys. What's that, JT? The litmus test is this. Think about if you're driving home, middle of the night, let's call it 2 a.m., your car starts acting funny, you break down on the side of the road, you don't know what's going on. How many people can you call while you're on the side of a busy interstate, 2 o'clock in the morning, that will come pick you up and take you home? Most people don't know 10 people that they can call at 2 o'clock in the morning and say, man, my vehicle broke down, I'm on the side of the interstate, it's dark, I don't got no lights, no nothing, uh, um, can you come get me and take me home? I need a ride home, right? If you got 10 people or more, you blessed, but most people don't have 10 people that they can call for that, right? So if you have less than 10 people that are really your diehard crew, family members and friends, multiply that number of people, whatever your number is, by the price of your ebook you trying to sell. The price of your course, the price of your plates at your restaurant, the price of your T-shirts, right? You selling a $20 T-shirt and you only got 10 real people in your inner circle. And if all of them bought it, you still ain't made enough money. So why are you making decisions based off of that small group of people, right? So, and I, and I start there because a lot of people... They don't want to do anything unless it's validated by their family members, their friends, and et cetera, right? Don't be that person. Let's Now let's look at it the other way, right? Now let's look at it the other way. The number one reason why most businesses go out of business is because they fail to get their customer acquisition costs above the lifetime value of their customer. You guys hear me say that a lot. What does that mean in South Carolina terms for people like me, right? That means that you spent so much time, energy, and money trying to convince these people to buy your stuff that once they bought it, you ain't made no money off of it. Once you factor in the total cost of that sale, you ain't made no money off of it, right? So so stop trying to convince people, right? If people don't believe that I can help them make money, I said, I tell them straight up, I can't, right? If you don't believe that I can help you make money, then I can't, right? Because above all else, it's, it's up to you. Right. Above all else is up to you. Same thing with anything. If you don't believe that so and so can cook good enough food, then you're not going to go to their restaurant. Why? You've already told yourself that. Here's a challenge I have for you all. This right here will change your life for the rest of your life. If and only if you're ready for it. What's the most important thing? If you can only pick one of these two, what's the most important thing? If you can only pick one of these two. That would guarantee that you'll become a millionaire in your lifetime. Mindset or tactics. Put it in the live chat. If you could only have one of these two things. Which one of these things. If you could wholeheartedly only have one. Would guarantee you'll become a millionaire in your lifetime. Mindset or tactics. Put it in the chat. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it in the chat. Let me see what you guys what you guys got. Boom. All right, I see mindset. Mindset, 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 right? I'm a, I'm going to break it down for anybody out there that might feel like I want to say tactics, but everybody's saying mindset, right? Here's why just having the tactics is not enough for the guarantee that you become a millionaire. Everybody here, everybody here can Google how to build a house. And then once you Google all the tactics on how to build a house, you can watch the YouTube videos, read the articles, and then you can go to Home Depot or Lowe's and start buying materials, right? By the grace of God, I'm doing pretty well. I can go buy the materials to buy a mansion if I wanted to right now today, right? Understand this, just because I can go learn the tactics and buy the materials does not make me capable of building that house, right? Why? Because once I really start getting into it and say, okay, first I got to clear the land. I got to get rid of all of these trees. I need to level this land. I need. To, I don't know what I don't know about that. 
So I got to go through that whole process and learn how to do that properly. Then I got to uh, create a foundation for this house to stand on. There's going to be so many things along the way that I'm going to be learning. It's going to be frustrating and I'm going to have to have the right mindset or else guess what's going to happen. I'm going to say, man, I can't do this. It's so many regulations from the county or the city, so many permits. You got to frame it up this way. It's so much work just to clear the land. After you clear the land, it's so much work to get this done, this done. I didn't know I needed a soil test. I didn't know that I need all these uh, uh, inspections. I didn't know that this material was on back order. I didn't know that this has to be done a certain way. Right. And if you have the wrong mindset, but you have all of the steps, right, you could go for free and Google all of the steps. You can have all of the steps and still say, OK, man, I know all the steps to build a house and man, I can't build a house. I got all the tactics. Right. All the tags. Oh, man. When we when we doing the plumbing, it need to be pinned every four feet. Right. At least in the Carolinas. I don't know what it is where you are, but I know I need to have it pinned every four feet, right? I, I know I need to have this kind of pitch, right? I need to have all of this stuff done, all right? But what if, what if you did it wrong because you thought it was right, but you brand new to it and you just applying the tactics and at least in the Carolinas, right? If you fail inspection twice on a property, you got to pay for a new permit, Right. If you fail inspection twice, you got to pay for a whole new permit. You pretty much start all the way back over. If you mess up twice, they'll come inspect it one time. Right. It don't cost you anything. If you fail, they'll tell you what you failed. Right. If they come back a second time and you pass, you good. If you fail, you start over. You got to go pay and pull another permit and try it again. Right. Now, maybe you're in an area where it's different. Or the rules might not be the same for you there. I'm just telling you about where I am, right? And I'm using that as a high-level example because everybody know that's true. We all can Google how to build a house. We all can go to Home Depot, Lowe's, the lumber yard, order it from overseas, whatever area uh, you're going to get the best price on materials for. And, and even though I got all the materials, I know all the tactics, I still can't build a house. Why? Because I haven't became the person that says no matter what, I'm going to build this house. I don't care what happens, right? I don't care if while we're going, somebody breaks in this property and steals some of our materials, which has happened to me before as a real estate investor. I'm still going to build this house, right? I don't care that I'm at a point now where I'm going to have to figure out how to increase the value of this property because the cost of materials went up so high it ain't really no 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 meat left on this bone to flip it. So I'm going to have to keep it as a rental, right? But if all you had was the mindset that says no matter what, I'm going to become a millionaire, right? You're going to figure out the tactics. Either you're going to figure it out or you're going to figure out how to partner with somebody that has it figured out and get it done, right? I don't know how to physically through all the tactics, build a house. I own six of them, free and clear, no debt, right? I think I own six. I own five of them, and then I got some land, so I lied, right? I own five of them, um, and I got some land. I got a call on the way back from Mexico um, to get a five unit for $260,000, though. So if we get that, it'll be 10 doors, five single-family homes, one five-unit apartment, and then some land. But I want to turn that land into a paintball field. But how is it that somebody, I can't tell you how to pour a foundation. I can't tell you how to frame a house. I can't even tell you when the inspector comes to inspect the property. I don't even know what they're looking at. I just know if we pass or if we fail, right? How is it somebody like that? I'm 33 years old. I own five properties, five single family homes, free and clear and some land, right? And, and I'm looking at buying a five unit apartment building cash and i can't tell you the first step about building a house because i have the mindset of a real estate investor so i don't even need to know right i know who to partner with i know how to make sure it's done right i know how to not get taken advantage of but how to dig a foundation no idea i could google it 
I could YouTube it, right? But even if I did that, I have no interest in doing it. I'm still going to pay somebody to do it. It's not the best use of my time. And I understand that because I have the proper mindset, right? I understand that because I have the proper mindset. So if you could only pick one thing and one thing alone that would guarantee that you become a seven-figure man or woman or greater, it's mindset. Think about this. What's the common denominator? How many people... I have a whole playlist on this channel that's called testimonials. I get testimonials underneath videos all the time, right? Sometimes I share them. Sometimes people get in their feelings and say, you know, they, they feel the type of way you being arrogant. So I don't share all of them anymore. Right. But they're out there. All right. Why is it that you can watch the exact same YouTube videos, take the exact same courses or buy the exact same eBooks? Start the same business in the same market as somebody else that has the same resources or lack thereof as you. And you can fail and they can succeed. Right? Does God have favorites? I don't think so. So why is it that somebody exactly like you, other than their mindset, can have everything else that you have? They can see y'all, y'all seen the same YouTube videos. Y'all bought the same books and courses. Y'all live in the same market. Y'all both just as broke as one another or just as rich as one another. But this person executes on it with a different mindset. Some people go into stuff with the mentality that I'm doing this just to prove you wrong. And guess what? You will. If you go into something just to prove that this thing is not worth the money, this thing is not going to work, I guarantee you, you will be right. I'm unapologetically a believer. I'm a faith-based entrepreneur is how I identify. So those of you out there that are faith-based entrepreneurs, we know the power of whatsoever a man thinketh, so is he. Faith without work is dead. Let's talk a little bit because my faith-based family, we don't need to be sold on belief. We already know that. It's the people that don't have a spiritual connection that have no idea how powerful belief is. So I want to give it to you, not even from the spiritual side, because you might not even believe in none of that, right? That might be like hocus pocus voodoo to you. Let's talk about science. Your innermost part of your brain is not your rational part of your brain. It's called a reptilian brain. Some people call it the lizard brain. <coughs> you guys heard me teach about this before. Let's go a little bit deeper. The goal of the reptilian brain is self-preservation. The goal of the reptilian brain is not to decide if what you said is true or not. Studies have been done. If you say and not audibly say, I mean, if you say in your mind, meaning that if you believe you cannot lose weight, your reptilian brain, which is designed for self-preservation, it is designed for over 50% of the decisions that you make subconsciously and consciously, right? If you say in your mind, if you believe you cannot lose weight, your reptilian brain will release neurons into your body. It will re it will make your cells retain more water weight. So just because you believe you cannot lose weight, it automatically becomes harder to do. Just because you believe it. Because that part of your brain is not rational, right? That part of your brain, that job is, uh, my job is to keep you alive, Right? That's what's true for my reptilian brain. That's what's true for your reptilian brain. Above all else, self-preservation. I want to keep you alive. If you believe something, that part of your brain says, I assume you believe this because this is going to protect us. So if you say we can't lose weight, maybe there's a famine coming. Let me release some neurons so that way you start retaining water weight better because you're probably right. If you say we can't make six figures in a month, we can't make six figures in a day, guess what that part of your brain is going to do? Imagine if you go to the mall today or whatever it is you like to do, but let's assume at least one person here likes to go to the mall, right? If you were at the mall today and you had a pocket full of money or a credit card, a debit card full of money and plenty of means to pay off the credit card if you was going to use that, right? And you said, okay, man, I'm going to go to this store and I'm going to see what kind of shoes they got. But then I'm going to go to this store, see what kind of clothes they got. I'm going to get some cologne or perfume from there. I'm going to get a watch or something from there. I'm going to go to the food court and eat at this restaurant because, ooh, I like when they be having the such and such in the food court. And you go all day, 
right? You and your your close friends or your your close family members, just you and your loved ones, y'all go spend a day at the mall. And y'all shop till y'all drop. Y'all high energy, y'all laughing, y'all talking, spending money, having a great time. Man, it was a great day. I got some nice stuff. I was with good people. Matter of fact, we ended it. We went and caught a movie that everybody wanted to see. Fantastic day, right? If you take that same man or woman and sit them down in a quiet place in their home and said, here's a book that'll teach you how to be rich. Here's a course on your laptop that'll teach you how to be rich. If that person believes that people like them that come from low income environments, that have the past trauma that they have, they have the credit score that they have, they have the debt that they have, that don't make money like other people that they believe they should be making, right? If you take that person with that mindset, now when you put them in the mall, they got more energy than Sonic the Hedgehog. You sit them down and because they believe it, it doesn't matter what they say, they mind start racing. Man, I can't focus on this book. Man, I can't go through this course. Man, I'm tired. Man, I was supposed to call so-and-so. Man, I need to check my email. Man, let me see what's going on on Instagram real quick. Man, let me do this. Let me do that, right? You think that's happening by accident? You told yourself you couldn't do it. So your reptilian brain said, okay, we can't do it. That's how powerful your belief is, right? Same person. I put you in the mall with your loved ones. You go crazy. I put you in an environment to better yourself. You don't believe that you can do it. So your mind tells you we can't do it. We can't focus on this. How are we going to focus on this, JT? You already said we can't do it. You already said people like us, credit score as low as ours. We don't make no money. We don't know how to sell nothing. You already told us people like us can't take this and do big stuff. So I believe you. So you know what I'm going to do? Reptilian brain that impacts the majority of your decisions. I'm going to make your mind wonder. I'm going to remind you about something that you wasn't even thinking about. You know what? We tired. Now will be the perfect time to take a nap. It's the middle of the day. You sleepy. Right? That's all because of your belief system. Right? Belief, your mindset, is the most important thing. The issue that most people have is that they're so reactionary, they don't think about making more money till they need more money, right? The old people say until the wolf at the door. Now you got this wolf at the door that you're trying to keep at bay. You looking for quick tactics to make quick money. And because you adopt that mindset, you can't even understand why that's the reason why you can't get ahead in a sustainable way. You told yourself that's how we do it. When we got money, we ain't checking our bank accounts. We ain't worried about our spending habits, man. We'll be all right. We'll figure it out, right? You believe that people like you, you supposed to be broke, right? It, it, people that's your color, from your background, from your whatever, right? Because people have all of these limiting beliefs. But we don't convince people. We validate. What's the difference between con convincing and validate? Convincing means I'm trying to make you believe something you didn't already believe. Validate means I'm trying to confirm something that you already believe. So in your business, I don't care what product, what service, what information you sell, your goal is not to convince, your goal is to validate, which means that I'm talking to a different person, right? I don't make content to make people believe that they can make six and seven figures. You got to already believe it before you watch the video. Right. I'm here just to show you how to take that belief and turn it into a tangible asset that will manifest that money in your bank account. That's all my job is. Right. Because I know it's not my job to make you believe anything. Right. That's the number one reason that most businesses go out of business. That's the fastest way for me to waste my time and have no impact. Right. So all I do is say, you know what? There are people out there that already believe they can do it. If they believe they can do it, my job is to give them the tactics to manifest that belief into a into their bank account. Right now, will, does that mean certain people will watch the content that don't believe that, but they just like the title and the thumbnail? Absolutely. Right. 
Now, if they come and their mind is changed, cool. But does that mean that I'm trying to change their mind? Absolutely not. Right? Absolutely not. If somebody says, I don't believe you, I say, okay. If somebody says you can't do it, I believe them. Why? Because I understand that your belief system is, is the most powerful thing. Right? If you don't believe it, then it's true to you. Right? That's why I always preach. There's a difference between the truth and your truth. Right? Your life will be lived at whatever standard, by whatever quality you can imagine, based off of your truth, not the truth. Right? There are billionaires right now. There's millionaires right now. There's people that never worry about making money right now. And there's people that are so scared that they're not going to have the money to pay that bill that they know is coming, that they don't know what to do. Totally different mindset. Right? Totally different mindset. So don't convince. Validate. That means you're talking to people that already believe what you're saying. All right? They're already buying the solution you sell. All right? Consistency over everything. Everybody wants to know a secret. Here's a secret. Consistency. Right? I was broken, homeless, sleeping on the side of Interstate 95. I made a YouTube video. It's still out on this channel. And in that video, I said, I don't know when this video is going to come out. I recorded it in 2017. I said, I don't know when this video is coming out, but when this video does come out, I'm going to be doing way better. Two years later, I released the video. When I released the video, I was somebody that was making, right, seven figures a year. You know how crazy that is, right? I went and became somebody in two years that went from being homeless, sleeping on the side of the road. All the way to becoming somebody totally different, right? And this person that was totally different was a seven-figure entrepreneur. Crazy. Crazy, right? So consistency over everything, all right? You don't have to know how to do everything right today. Starting is more important than knowing. Mm, that's another one that get people mad too. People don't like that. Starting is is more important than knowing. Starting is more important than knowing. When I became an independent courier, my uncle that was in trucking for decades told me it was a scam. He said, man, I've been in trucking for decades. I never heard of an independent courier. Why would you go do that? Right? Do, be a dispatcher or a broker or get your CDLs or whatever. Right? And then he told me, well, don't get your CDLs because at that time they wasn't treating drivers right. Right. It was just a lot of drivers. Companies wasn't doing right by them. Promised them one thing when they got hired on and then switched it up once they started working for them. Right. If I would have listened to him, I would have never made it this far. He had my best intentions at heart. Right. He's my first ever mentor. One of my first ever mentors. Right. That's why I tell you, do your due diligence. Do your due diligence on me, but also do your due diligence on the people around you, because even though my uncle loved me, and he had my best interest at heart, my uncle wasn't qualified to tell me about a business he knew nothing about. So respectfully, I decided to do something else. Now, what I started with and what I'm doing now is totally different. I started off as an independent courier. I went from being an independent courier to an e-com salesman, right? And then I went from e-com to media. So by the time I made my very first social media video, I had already known how to make six figures as an independent courier and six figures in e-commerce. Most people thought I was just an independent courier person. When I started making YouTube videos about being a courier, I was already making most of my money in e-com. I just made the independent courier videos because that's what people like to see at the time. Right? Now, I made my first million dollars in media. What if I would have said, you know what, I'm going to wait until I know exactly what industry is going to make me a million dollars. And until I get a guarantee that this industry is going to make me a million dollars, I'm not going to start. I would have never, ever made it in my life. There's only an 8% chance that you'll ever become a millionaire anyway. And I'm talking about net worth. I ain't talking about cash liquid in your bank account. It's an even smaller chance of that. That you'll ever have cash liquid in your bank account, seven figures. But I'm talking about we add up your house with whatever other assets that you have, with your checking account, savings account, whatever liquid capital you have. 
right? If all of that adds up to a million dollars in your lifetime, you're in the top 8% of all people in the United States. Most people, statistically speaking, will never reach that goal, right? I'm 33 years old and, and have already reached that goal, right? Not bragging or boasting. I'm just telling you the reality of it, right? Which is why it's important you do your due diligence, like I said. But I got here through consistency, right? And starting is more important than knowing. I started off being an independent courier because I didn't want to have the regret of what if I would have started that business, how would my life be different? And then I saw the independent courier industry was good, but here's some issues that I had with the industry. So I wanted to diversify my income. I'm not going to lie. It was a big mistake because wealth is built through concentration and then maintained through diversification. But I diversified way too soon. By the grace of God, we did well in e-commerce. But I didn't crack seven figures till I went all in on media. Right now we own over uh, like eight or nine Instagram accounts, uh, like four YouTube channels, um, working on producing shows that are on our own network, Lord willing, knock on wood. Right. So that being said, you have to start before you know everything about it. You make an educated decision based off of your due diligence, but you don't wait until you know everything to do anything because that's the surefire way to do nothing. Right. Mindset over tactics. We already touched on that. Let me see if there's any more questions. I'm going to let you guys go. We've been on for a while today, but I definitely wanted to get into my bag about selling secrets to making eighty four hundred dollars fast. Right. For anybody that watched this long, let's 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 go even deeper. Well, let me see what adds value to you all. Right. Based off y'all questions. Let me see what, what we need to do. Let me see. Boom, boom, boom. Fear narrows your focus. Keep you from seeing obvious opportunities until after the fact. That's a fact. Right? Um, boom, boom, boom. So fear always comes. Remember this. Fear always comes from a lack of knowledge. I was raised to be afraid of dogs. Now I own some of the biggest dogs or biggest, you know, they're one of the biggest dog breeds. Right um, out there. Not the biggest, but one of the bigger dog breeds are South African Masters. All right. So, and I got 10 of them now to I, I sell these puppies. Fear comes from a lack of knowledge. Right. So if there's anything that you're afraid of, whether it's an investment, a business, a side hustle, a dog, a fish, a, 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 a girl that you want to go talk to. Right. It comes from a lack of knowledge. You have to educate yourself on, okay, how do I efficiently talk to this young lady? How do I efficiently uh, invest in stocks, real estate, this business, that business? That's why when people always tell me, hey, JT, I got X amount of dollars I want to invest. I tell them the first thing that you should invest in is understanding because anything that can make you a lot of money can cost you a lot of money. So yeah, I can tell you, put that money in an independent courier service, scale it up to six figures. You can say, I hate driving. You can say, uh, I, I bought this vehicle and it's, and it's having mechanical problems. Um, I'm dead on the side of the road. I don't know what to do, right? Now, granted, all of these are issues that in the business you deal with and you solve. But what I'm saying is that mindset is more important than tactics. And you just need to come to it with the mindset that no matter what, I'm going to get to the next level, right? Let me see where we at. But fear comes, always remember, Fear comes from a lack of knowledge. How would you monetize? How would you monetize what? I see a question that says, how would you monetize? How would you monetize? It depends on what we monetize. If I'm going to monetize puppies, I'm going to call the breeder and tell them, sell them and I'll give them 50%. Like, what, what are we monetizing? Right? If I'm going to monetize a food business, if I was going to start over today, I would leverage Instagram and then partner with... um. A, a kitchen, a commercial kitchen, and I would launch my restaurant through like an incubator, meaning like my kitchen would only exist on DoorDash, um, Uber Eats, like whatever apps like that are in your area. And then I would use the money that I generate by being a, a, a 
a gig restaurant or whatever you want to call it. Like there, it wouldn't be like you could physically come to my restaurant or physically come to my food trailer. Right. I do own a food trailer, but I'm saying if I was starting over today, I would monetize that by partnering with a commercial kitchen, setting up my business. I would drive traffic via Instagram just to oversimplify it. And um, the call to action would be order on DoorDash. Right. And we'll do specials. Our presentation would be crazy. We would make probably the, the best reels we possibly could advertising our process and how good our food is and looks and all of that right and um and drive traffic there and i would use that money to fund a food trailer food trailer and that business to fund a physical restaurant but if i was to do a physical restaurant it will also be an event space as well just to maximize the profitability of that commercial space um so yeah without knowing what we monetize and i don't know Right. Without knowing what we monetize and I don't know how you monetize it. Right. Um, but yeah, depending on what we if, if it's dogs, if it's food, if it's digital products, if it's social media, is it you know what I mean? Is is it board games, right? Is it planners, right? What what we monetize? All right. So if, if I was to start over today and let's say I wanted to make $8,400, right? Because $8,333 in chains per month gets us to six figures a year. Um, and and it, I will use the same process. The numbers would just be tweaked. If I want to do this in a month, a year, a week, a day, or whatever, right? And I got the award last year. A lot of y'all already seen it for making it in a day. So this is not what I think. This is literally just strategy that you can implement. So if, if I was brand new, though, let's say I was brand new. I haven't ever done it before. What's a proven blueprint to do it? I will first start with the customer. So, okay, I want to make $100,000. I'm writing this down um, as I do it too, by the way. So let's say I wanted to make $100,000. Boom. How do I want to make it? Right? What I mean by that is uh, what industry am I passionate in? What industry do I know about? Whatever the case may be, right? So let's say that um, that industry for me is being an independent courier, right? Because what I know is that you cannot know what you're doing and make $40,000 a year. So me as a driver, myself being the butt in the seat, I would at least make $40,000 a year. That's working five days a week, not working weekends, right? Conservative route. All right. And then if I wanted to hire drivers, I know that one, I had to find bigger opportunities. So let's say 40,000 is a cargo van. All right. I know, and I'm just talking about my market. So don't get hung up on exacts. I know in my market, Sprinter vans are going to make between 60 K to 75 K starting out brand new, no experience, right? Box trucks is really no limit, but uh, if we just had to just add it just for the sake of the argument, let's say box trucks at a bare minimum. Um, I don't see them doing any less than two thousand a week. Um, so what we're talking eight thousand. That's that's already a six figure play. So yeah, we might as well say box trucks, non CDL box trucks. We already had a hundred thousand, right? So if, if, and I'm just using this, this framework works for whatever, right? It works for whatever. All right. So 40,000 is me starting off as a butt in the seat cargo van driver, because let's say all I had the money for to start off was with a cargo van. Now I would have the means to buy a cargo van, but I wouldn't even buy the cargo van. I would contact the 3PL and I would ask that 3PL what routes they had available. Then if they had one available that it numbers made sense, let's say at least, because I wouldn't even do it for less than 40 grand a year. But so let's say bare bones, 40 grand a year is what I'm gonna make as a cargo van. Boom. That's 40 right there. All right. I know if I save my money, live below my means, get my credit together, and maybe do one or two side hustles I learned on the JT Automations YouTube channel, I could in less than a year make extra disposable income. Outside of that 40 grand or leverage that 40 grand in my credit and I can buy a Sprinter van. All right. If the Sprinter van is going to make me conservatively 60K a year, 
right? Let's say all in expenses, I don't want to spend no more than 45K, right? So that, that I can now add $15,000 to me. So I go from 40 to $55,000 in my pocket just by hiring somebody. Now, of course, I'm, I'm not getting into the weeds, but I want to address it just to let you guys know. I will factor in insurance, uh, maintenance, fuel, paying the driver, any fees that the 3PL pass on to me, right? But I would conservatively, every time I hire a driver, my income would increase by $15,000, right? So I could continue that and just say, how many times do I need to do 15K? to make another 50 grand. So easy math, real quick. Um, 50,000 coming in in $15,000 increments. Boom, boom, boom. My calculator acting a little slow. Y'all probably already know the answer. All right, so let's round up. Four more drivers. I wouldn't do that though, because to me, I'm not gonna manage. We're just doing this for example. I wouldn't manage a fleet of myself plus five other drivers just to make 100K. But to oversimplify it, I could do that, right? That's just one way to do it. Now, for one, I'm not going to be making 40K very long. And my box truck is not going to be making 60K very long. So those numbers are going to increase as my experience increases, right? Um... But yeah, to me as a business owner with experience, for me to be working the business plus five other workers just to make a hundred thousand dollars a year is a waste of time, right? But this example is just a simple example. If we get into the details, right? What I could do is I could instead of getting the sprinter van, what if I got the box truck? Right? The box truck could make a hundred grand by itself. So I can avoid ever having a sprinter van and I can use the disposable income that the box truck creates and use that money to buy a sprinter van and then employ somebody to be in either or. And I can eliminate cargo vans from my fleet. I can just have a cargo van just because that's an easy entry point, but then leverage that money to buy vehicles that make me more money. Right. And, and I'm using the independent courier service because. That is uh, the very first business I did, right? Let's say we wanted to get into e-commerce because that was the second business I did really well in, all right? So in e-commerce, I specialized in selling tech and toys. There's a lot of different niches, but tech and toys, right? And I knew if I applied the 1% rule, meaning that I maintained an inventory of at least 100 items, I would sell at least one a day that I could get daily sales. That's not the only rule, but I want to be super conservative, right? I also know that if you find a Hasbro and Dynamis Rex, one of the original ones, they were retailing for seven bucks and they peaked at around 200 bucks and they were averaging around 140, 150 bucks once I got out of the market. So I'm going to just use that. Um, the eBay sold listings will tell you the data for today. Um, I'm not looking it up, so I'm just telling you based off of the old numbers. You would use whatever the numbers are based off of the eBay sold listings. It's absolutely free. So let's say rounding up, I bought it for seven. I'm going to ship it, so I'm going to buy packaging materials. I'm going to pay for shipping, and I'm going to overshoot it because it's not going to be this high. But I'm going to say I'm going to sell it for 140 I got $20 total invested, right? I'm going to make $120 every time I sell that particular item, right? If I have 100 items, I'll sell at least one a day. Matter of fact, if you had this item, though, you would sell pretty much as many as you possibly uh, could get in a day. So we could sell, if we could find them, and they were in stores like Roses. Um, Roses is like a discount store if you don't have that in your area. But if we had five, we could sell five in a day, no problem. So now we're at $600. So all I have to do, and I'm just using that as an example, all I have to do is, is use buying prejudice. And I mean prejudice, not in a racist or negative way. But if I only focus on items that are going to give me around that same markup of $120 net profit after all expenses, 
I could take $100,000, right? If I'm getting my money $120 at a time, I got to sell 833 of them, 0.33. Let's round it up to 834. Let me check my math. 834 times 120. So, yep. So, I can source, right? My, my framework would be, the hard part is sourcing 834 of these items, right? But as soon as I find the, and it doesn't have to be literally the Hasbro and Dynamis Rex, it could be any item as long as it gets me net profit $120. So I could say, I'm not going to buy anything that's not moving fast. And I can see how fast it's moving. They got software, but the freeway is eBay sold listings. So I'm not going to buy anything that's not a fast moving item selling at at least $120 net profit. I only need 834 of those rounding up. If I divide that by 12, that's 69 and a half sales a month. I could easily do that, right? Um, that means that my inventory needs to remain at roughly around 300 items at all times, right? I, I, I hope I'm not confusing anybody. Y'all let me know. Because some people want tactics, some people want mindset. I'm letting you know, JT can go either way, right? So, so another way to say it is, I'm not buying anything that sells, and when it sells, I don't make at least $120 profit. If, it, if it's going to make me $50, I don't buy it. If it's going to make me $30, I don't buy it, right? It's going to take me longer to find those items, but I only need 834 of them for the entire year, right? Think about that. I only need them for that many for the entire year. Now, this is reselling, right? This is what I like about private labeling. Instead of me having to go find 834 items at a price point where I can make those margins, if I private label a product, I create it. So now I create an item that has that markup. How do you sell it? Marketing or partnerships, right? Shout out to Self. And I should have looked up Self last name before I got on the live. But I'll just tell you what Self does. His name, respectfully Self, if you see this, his name's not that important, more of what he does. So he wrote a book called Private Label Millionaires. It's available on Audible. You can check it out. Um, What he has done is one product that he did was he sourced diabetic sneakers from China, Alibaba.com, AliExpress.com. Like I said, I'm giving y'all too many plays for a free YouTube video. Smash the like button, share this video, right? This is going to be one of them videos you can make money with immediately, right? Somebody already clicked off of the video because it was too long. You here for a reason. I'm going to give you the play. He was sourcing from Alibaba.com. He said at his door, uh, all in, it'll be roughly $6 a shoe. Uh, these were not Jordans, Yeezys, Gucci's, or whatever. These were medical-grade diabetic sneakers. He would then turn around and flip them for around 450 some odd dollars. I don't even remember the exact number. Some people will say, oh, man, you taking advantage of those people. You selling $6 shoes for 450 some odd dollars. Guess what? Self didn't set the, uh, the price. Uh, Medicare or Medicaid, whichever coverage, I don't remember which one is which, but Medicare or Medicaid, the insurance that pays for that, that's what paid for it. And that's what set the price. So he didn't even have to convince grandma to dig in her purse and underneath all of that peppermint candy, pull out 450 some odd dollars, right? She came and got them for free. Her insurance covered them, right? So if we try to make a hundred thousand, he, he sold, he said, 4000 a year. Let's just say $450 conservatively. So if you turn in 400, well, let's, let's look at the profit. $6 is all in, including the shipping to his door. So if it was more than 450, but 450 minus six, that got him $444. Um, times he said he averaged at least 4,000 a year, $1.7 million a year. By private labeling the shoes and selling them, uh, advertising them to people that qualify with their insurance, that they are able to get one pair of shoes for free per year that their insurance will pay for. And easily ran the play doing that, right? That's one play. 
All right, another play that he did was with the pillows. So he private labeled pillows. And this is going to be the last play, I promise. Then I'm going to get out of your way. He took these pillows. And with these pillows, he said he got them at a, a great price too. I forget the exact price. Retail price would have been $19.99 if he just would have sold them straight up. He would have turned a profit, but it wouldn't have been the profit that he wanted to make off of it. He took whatever he paid for it. Again, I forget off top because what he's doing is more important than how he did it, right? He takes those, those pillows that normally they retail for $19.99 and through private labeling them, sells them for $299.99. Let's just call it 300 bucks. Right, we all family here. We can be honest. Two hundred and ninety nine dollars is three hundred dollars. Right? He didn't pay twenty dollars for them because he would have turned a profit if he if he would have sold them at retail. But because I can't remember his exact number, let's just say he did pay twenty dollars for them. Three hundred minus twenty is a two eighty profit. He sold more pillows than he did shoes. But if we multiply that times four thousand, he made one million. 120,000 and he didn't have to go source these items from from roses right all he did was get them in private label them. his messaging was with the pillow was a micro niche he said if you are somebody suffering from seat from sleep deprivation due to a shoulder replacement i didn't even know that was a thing but apparently there's a whole community of people that have had shoulder replacements and something about after their surgery, they can't get comfortable and sleep right. These pillows allowed them to get comfortable and they could go to sleep, right? Now, these are the same pillows that you could have bought for $20. This is what I'll tell you, though. Perception matters. Perception matters. If somebody has a shoulder replacement, which, you know, I hope you never need one, but if, if you have to have one, do whatever it takes, right? But let's say you had a shoulder replacement and you went back home and tried to sleep on your regular pillow and you just, for whatever reason, you, it was hurting your shoulder, you wasn't really getting good sleep and et cetera, right? And you saw that there was a pillow that was advertised medical grade, bamboo covered, designed for those men and women suffering from sleep deprivation due to issues with their shoulder replacement, right? For $299, right? That's a that's only a small group of people that have that problem. But guess what? Those people that have that problem uh, severely are going to buy that pillow. Why? Because their regular pillow is not working. They're not going to go to Walmart and say, okay, let's just grab another Walmart pillow and see if that helps. Let's find a pillow that's advertised to help with that problem. Of course, he gave a money-back guarantee. And of course, it worked because he wasn't lying to the people. The pillow does help. But it was the same pillow you could have got for $20. But the $20 pillow was only advertised as memory foam. His was medical-grade memory foam, bamboo-covered, specially designed for people that are suffering from sleep deprivation due to, due to shoulder replacement surgery. Which one sounds like the one you need if you have shoulder replacement surgery? And I don't know if all memory foam is created equal, right? But that's what he did. And he took a pillow where his competitors was charging $20, repackaged it, changed the, changed the framing, and sold his for $300. So we live in a world today where there's somebody that can go buy $6 sneakers and make millions of dollars in a year. Somebody can go buy a pillow for less than $20 and make millions of dollars a year. And you on YouTube watching YouTube videos and can't figure out how to make $10,000 in a month. That's not a shot. I want that to be a wake up call to your mindset. What do you believe? Because whatever you believe is going to manifest itself in your life. We already talked deep about that. Like I said, that's enough. That's enough of the technical aspects of it, right? That's enough of the technical aspects of it. You guys get it, right? If you believe I'm lying, go to Alibaba.com, right? So JT give out real plays. But I told you guys, you got to talk to me because I, I I done warmed up now. So now I'm about to go do some business, right? Um, I could, Well, and I don't see any more questions. 
But um tactics, let me see where we at. I don't know what got into my eye. Um boom boom boom. Yep, good stuff. Start even if you don't know. Absolute. Absolutely. Um Boom. Somebody said they had a thought of that restaurant slash event space. Yep. Yep. I want you to take action on your thoughts in 2024 and beyond. Right. As long as it's legitimate, ethical and moral. Right. We're not just going to overthink about it. We're going to overdo it. Um, boom, boom, boom. Can those in the chat type whatever focus in business would be so that JT can make an example to actively assist you all? Having some form of focus or openness helps them to help you. Please type it. Yeah, that definitely would help. Yep. Is the info in your independent courier video still relevant? Absolutely. Um, my focus right now is day trading. Here's the issue, right? You need to start with one thing. All right. If you start off saying I'm trying to be an independent courier and a day trader, you're not going to make a whole lot of money doing either one of them because there's going to be a learning curve in both. Right. So if you're trying to learn two things at the same time, that's the wrong way to do it. Pick one, master that and use the overflow, a.k.a. the disposable income you make off that thing to finance the other. So if you say day trading is going to be your thing, master day trading, use the disposable income your day trading creates and use that to buy equipment, hire a driver and now make money off the business. But you don't got to be the butt in the seat. Vice versa. You can take you can take the independent courier business. I don't know which one you like the most, but you could take that business, run that business up, right? And then at a high level, take the money that that business makes and let that fund your trading account. Right? So either way you can run the play. All right? But don't don't try to do both at the same time. Pick one thing and then use the disposable income that that one thing brings you. To finance the other thing. What book you're using for day trading? Um, I would say follow Jack, right? At CJack130 on Instagram. Um, boom, boom, boom. Yep, yep. Well, I mean, I haven't looked in Rose's toy section in years. I'm just telling you where I used to get them from. But we used to hit up all those discount places. Um, boom, boom, boom. Okay, all right. So my bad. That question about books wasn't even to me. I'm going to jump over to networking. All right. After winning the bid, what's my next step with tax deeds? You wait, right? You have already did the hard part now. Um, You got to wait to after the redemption period. So if you followed the blueprint the way we outlined it in the book, um, after you win the bid, you wait till after the redemption period. And that time, you're either going to get your money back plus interest, or you're going to get the deed to your uh, the tax deed or the whatever, depending on if you're in a deed state or a lien state to your property. All right. Um. Boom. 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 Uh. Can you please do a video step by step showing us how to buy tax deeds? Yep. That's already done. It's already out on the channel and it's outlined in the book. Um. Boom. 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 Okay. He solved a problem and got paid. Yep. All right. Boom, boom, boom. Can you recommend a courier course to learn more? You know, I'm, I'm actually sitting down with some other couriers. Um, So if you guys want a course, let me talk to them and see which one actively has a course. And um, and I'll I'll bring that to you guys. So um, I'll put that on my list of things to present here soon. So for those of you out there that want a course on it, we'll we'll talk about it. With e-commerce and your example you just gave about your friend selling the pillows that he packaged and mailed them, mail out the items himself. Heck no. Right? Um, that's that's what they got fulfillment centers. That's what they got private label partners. Like I'm making a board game. I'm not designing it. Well, I am in a sense designing it, but I'm not cutting the cards. And folding the boards and printing onto the screens. Like, I'm not doing that part of it. Um, now, you could if you wanted to. I wouldn't, though. I would use a fulfillment center or um, just pay the manufacturer the private label for it. It's going to be a fee, of course, but um, what's your time worth? 
So you could just pay them to private label it for you. All right. Um, boom, boom, boom. Let me see. Uh, scared to do accounting, but I like making videos after graduating with my degree. Yep, yep, you can. All right, so I think we tackled all of the questions that I've seen come in so far, and I've had a ton of people call me, so I need to start returning calls um, and see what's going on. So appreciate you guys' attention here. Um, if there's anything else we need to cover, put it underneath the video. We'll talk about it in the next live stream. I plan on coming back consistently with you guys. Till next time, don't hustle, stay hustling. JT Automations, I'm gone.